total solar eclipse, prophecy, numerology, and war. Last time we had a total solar eclipse was June 8th, 1918. Exactly 40 days later was the declaration of World War I. So what happens 40 days after August 21st? Will World War III follow suit? Recently, a Leak Project subscriber sent me some nuclear warning and preparedness packets from Hawaii and a screenshot of a headline warning of a North Korea attack on the islands. Also, he shared with me, and I'm going to share it with you guys, an image of a newspaper front page saying Hawaii might be attacked by Japan, and this was a week prior to the Pearl Harbor incident. People were actually warned about it on the front page. This podcast is brought to you by Quick Bivy. It's a handheld bag that weighs a few ounces. It could literally help save your life. They're cheap, efficient, easy to use. They fit in the palm of your hand and can go with you just about anywhere. Okay, now China is also building bunkers next to the border of North Korea. Let's take a look at just a few of these headlines real quick. Over the past 24 hours, Google News. Japan warns North Korea nuclear threat has entered new stage. North Korea threatens physical action in response to UN sanctions. Chinese official China will pay the price for sanctions on North Korea. China vows to enforce UN curbs on North Korea. North Korea says U.S. will pay dearly for heinous crimes. That's fortune. So we're looking at NBC News, Fox News, The International, Washington Post, New York Times, Slate Magazine. The standoff with North Korea ends one of two ways. And then this is an interesting one. News.com.au, North Korea missile test. China fires warning shot. And then News Asia Channel. China holds war games as North Korea tensions spike. Tillerson in Thailand presses for more action on North Korea, CNBC. Now let's take a look here. You can see the solar eclipse, June 8th, 1918. Total solar eclipse, well, 40 days exactly, I looked it up, 40 days later, World War I, the first world war, the great war, the war that was supposed to end all wars, well, they realized how much of a cash cow this was, oh, this is great, population control, more merchandise, more cells, and we can feed the shadow dark beast masters, war pigs, evil minds that plot destruction, yeah, you know it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. So, World War II. The American Civil War. The Korean War. My grandpa served in the Korean War. My other grandpa was in World War II for like a week. Luckily, he didn't ever have to see any combat. So... The attack on Pearl Harbor, the morning of December 7th, 1941. Now let me share this with you. This is a headline, news, a week prior, November 30th, The Honolulu Advertiser, Japanese may strike over weekend. Kurusu bluntly warned, nation ready for battle. All over the front page. Now, this was an article, Yahoo News. Hawaii prepares for unlikely North Korea missile test. Associated Press, Jennifer Cinco Keller, came out July 21st. And then you can see the Hawaii State Department of Defense, the guidance summary for coordinated public messaging, nuclear detonation, Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, 
thank you to the gentleman that sent this information to me. They're going to have siren sound warning attacks. Or I'm sorry, siren sound attack warning signals. Nanny, 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 nanny. Emergency alert system advisory. The wireless emergency alert system advisory. Brilliant white light flash is observed. Those are three triggers. Then what? Immediate action. If you are indoors, stay indoors. Well away from windows. If you are outdoors, seek immediate shelter in a building, preferably a concrete structure, such as a commercial building or parking structure. If you're driving, pull safely to the side of the road and seek shelter in a nearby building or lie flat on the ground. So if you see a nuclear detonation and you're in a car going the opposite direction, you should just pull over and lay on the ground. <laughs> okay. And don't look at the flash of light. Don't look at the light, you guys. Blinded by the light. Remain sheltered until you are told it is safe to leave, or two weeks have passed. So don't leave your house for two weeks. You might get hungry. You might get thirsty. It might start to, or whatever shelter you're in. You may be advised that it's safe to leave your house or your shelter for short periods of time to locate food, water, medical care, electrical, water, and other utilities may be severely disrupted or unavailable. You don't say. Listen to local AM, FM radio stations. For official information, cell phone, television, radio, and internet services will be severely disrupted or unavailable. Small portable walkie-talkies may give you communication with nearby shelters. And make sure to tune into leakproject.com somehow. Where there's a will, there's a way. This is the event that took place last month, July 29, 2017, with the representatives, the legislators. Mahalo to your AIEA Pearl City legislators and council members and the Department of Emergency Management, Honolulu, cooperation and assistance of federal and state emergency management agencies presenting this event as part of the AIEA Pearl City Town Hall Meeting Series. The Emergency Preparedness Event. So, enough about that. Nanny, 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 nanny. Now let's go back to Pearl Harbor a week after front page news saying Japan may attack. You guys are getting warnings right now. We're all getting the warnings right now. Would you like to fly to Pyongyang? Would you like to just go check out North Korea? I mean, they've got tourist opportunities there. I mean, everybody wants to go to North Korea, right? Well, you can go there. It's a flight from Hawaii. It's about a day, seven hours. And then I was like, well, how far is that? That's 4,661 miles, the distance from North Korea to Hawaii. It's a long way away. And the media paints a picture of everything that North Korea attempts to launch fails. And I've even kind of goofed around before. I'm guilty about this as well, where I've goofed around about how Kim and his, and his 80-year-old generals and buddies are, you know, walking around the beach where it looks like at any time with a satellite, if things needed to happen, they could happen, but they don't. And I thought that he might be a plant, and I still do think that he might be a plant. But the technologies that they have, according to the Council of Foreign Relations, directly from their website, I'll show you the source here in a minute, and Global Firepower, they, another website that's a part of a military network where it shows how many submarines and missiles and, and personnel and how much energy they use, how much they obtain from their own resources, etc. The logistics. They've got some missiles that can shoot very far. And they've also got submarines about 60-plus submarines, I think 63 submarines. I'll show you this in a minute. So depending on how good our tracking networks are, and a lot of these submarines are World War II era type stuff. So I don't know if they're easier to track or more difficult or a combination of variables fit into that. Uh, this is directly from the CFR.org, the Council of Foreign Relations. You can see North Korea's ballistic missiles. They've got short-range Submarine launch ballistic missiles, medium range, intermediate range, intercontinental ICBMs that are 10,000 plus 
kilometers. So if you take kilometers into miles, take 10,000 kilometers into miles, what do you get? 6,213 miles. So that could definitely make it just from their point to Hawaii. Now, if they're in submarines, and if we're not able to track all these submarines, then that opens up a whole new can of worms. The question is, does Kim Young, does he go crazy? Is he controlled opposition? Will he have specific targets in mind? Remember a few years ago when they even had that article showing where they were going to launch their strike. It's on the California coast and a few other places. They're using like primitive screenplay props, it seemed like. But some of these guys, like the, uh, the Unha 3, has a 10,000-plus kilometer range, so over 6,000 miles, 6,200 miles. We take a look at some of their tech and their personnel population, 25 million, manpower available, 13 million, reserve personnel, 5.5 million, reaching military age, 415,000. Total aircraft, 944. Helicopters, 202. Attack helicopters, 20. Armored fighting vehicles, tower. I mean, a lot of this stuff, how are they going to get it off their, their island? Unless they're, they're breaking into South Korea, then it could get nasty for those guys. But here's the naval assets. 76 submarines. I'm sorry, I thought I said, I thought it was 63. So 76 submarines that we know about. Where are they? Now, here's what else is interesting. They consume 15,000 barrels a day and only produce 100 barrels a day. That puts things into a whole new perspective as far as their supply chain. So the warnings have been presented. Here is the information on some of their missiles. And according to a friend of mine that knows, you, know, you always hear about somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. My uncle, my uncle, well, if the sources are correct, North Korea is working on miniaturizing their nuclear tech so that they can ha so they can put it on these ICBMs so that it's small enough to fit on there as a mini payload. Tom Clancy and a lot of the games that have been presented, I've never, I shouldn't say never, I mean, I used to love video games when I was a kid, but I haven't been into video games for about 20 years. I even picked up a PS4 last year, played it a few times. Just I don't have the time for it. I'd rather put my time in other things. But I've noticed a lot of those games out there by Tom Clancy and others, like the Shadow Ops and the, the Special Forces and the terrorist drills and stuff like that. A lot of that revolves around the Korean Peninsula. And the, the area, you know, let's just, let's just take a look at the area again here. Let's zoom in. Make sure I'm still okay. Good deal. No, 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 no. All right. So you've got South Korea, where they could use their their tanks and and their land vehicles to go into South Korea. Now, Seoul is a very highly advanced technologically. You know, the city is definitely cutting edge. Maybe they've got some tech that they could use to shut that down. However, if it's not prone to EMP capabilities because it's older tech now it's computerized you know, maybe they'd need to use something else so North Korea, South Korea Japan China you got Russia is Russia going to help? is China going to help? or is China because with all these big bullies around you you think that they're going to be stupid and just start poking the bullies. Because I remember recently there was an article that came out about how a bunch of international leaders were gathering for peace talks and North Korea was launching missiles provoking everybody. Why would they do that? How does that make sense for them to just provoke everybody? To me, that seems as if either the person that's there is controlled opposition 
but I'm just a conspiracy theorist. Or he's completely bat shat crazy. Or this is being designed by outside influences to put them into that position where they have no choice or it's all fabricated to make people think that it's legit and those corporations and individuals in specific positions and even just the public opinion to sway the public as well Most of this has a very heavy underlying tone of war in the Korean Peninsula. I saw this same, these same tactics prior to September 11th, prior to the attack, uh, the attacks and, and going into the Gulf. So 40 days, ladies and gentlemen, 40 days after the solar eclipse, going to be September 30th, 2017. Wouldn't it be a trip if something huge went down that day, 40 days exactly? Because certainly 40 days after the solar eclipse of 1918, June 8th, start of World War I, I'm going to be in Idaho and I'm actually meeting up with a documentary crew out there that is doing a, a series on the solar eclipse, revelation, prophecies, global events, people preparing for certain events. And they've traveled the world. Like, they've been to Jerusalem. They've been to, I think, Egypt and all over the country. And I don't know everywhere they've been. They told me a few of the spots. Well, I'm going out to Idaho for the solar eclipse. They're going to be there. And they know a lot in reference to the prophecies and these eclipses and these events. I'm going to share with you later today a trailer that they produced for this upcoming series. It might just be one show. I'm not sure if it's just one show or if it's a whole series. But the trailer is spectacular. And these guys are legit. And they're with a huge media conglomerate. It's nice to know that there's people connected with these corporations that literally sculpt and influence hundreds of millions of people, if not billions it's neat to know that there's good guys working in conjunction with the machine. <laughs> so be excellent to each other. Also, make sure to subscribe to leakproject.com. You can actually sign up for free. If you want to be a premium member, it's 10 bucks a month, and your contributions are greatly appreciated, you guys. So if you can kick down 10 bucks a month or 50 bucks for the whole year, You'll get access to over 1,000, I think it's over 1,100 now, podcasts. They're downloadable, they're streamable, they're ad-free. Your contributions greatly help Leak Project. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see.